everyone, Terrible Dactyl here, and welcome to another edition of Jurassic Plastic Unboxing. You know, doing these videos has inspired me to go back and fill in some of the gaps that exist in my Carnegie collection. And one of the biggest gaps uh, in my collection are some of the repaints and remakes that have been done over the years of the original Carnegie collection models. So I actually uh, have been keeping an eye on eBay and other online sites recently to try and fill in some of those gaps and keep an eye out for some good deals. There's a little bit of a misconception that Carnegie Collection models go for a lot of money on eBay. And I have noticed that even the eBay sellers don't necessarily seem to know exactly how they should price some of these models. You'll see them go for crazy prices and also for really reasonable prices, sometimes even retail price or less. Sometimes you'll see sellers put a model up on eBay and just kind of see if it sells. And if it doesn't, they'll knock the price down until it's low enough for somebody to take a bite. And that's what happened with the models that I'm going to unbox today. I'm not going to tell you exactly how much I bought these for, but I can tell you that each of the models that we're going to unbox today, they're not exactly the easiest to find models, although they're not necessarily rare. It is rare to see them for what I would consider to be a reasonable price. All of these I was able to get for less than $10 a piece. So it is doable. Just be patient, keep an eye out, save some searches on eBay and, and find some good deals if you need to fill in those gaps in your collection like I do. So we're going to open up this box and take a look at some of the repaints and remakes of the original Carnegie models. Let's crack this guy open here. All right, so first up, we've got this big fella. Get him out of the bubble wrap here. As you can see, this hulking specimen is the well, second or third, depending on how you count the retools and um, re-sculpts of the early 90s. But this is the first full remake of the Carnegie Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it's not only a completely redone sculpt compared to the original, but it's got a completely new color scheme. And this is one that came out shortly after I kind of lost track of the Carnegie Collection models and and really stopped uh, collecting them as soon as they came out, as I had been doing throughout the 90s. I guess a combination of uh, getting ready to go off to college, and um, this is also about the same time that the Carnegie Collection started coming out with some models that I didn't feel were necessarily must-haves, like the Cetacosaurus, which it kind of bummed me out that it was in a different scale, and the remade... T-Rex, which we have right here, which is just an updated version of a model that I already had. Um, didn't quite excite me, um, especially after that transition in the mid-90s to the color vinyl instead of fully painted models. I just kind of wasn't necessarily feeling the newer ones too much, so I'm missing quite a few models from that era, which I'm going back and trying to backfill on now, obviously. But this is a really cool version of T-Rex, and the one thing that I want to instantly draw attention to is the way the mouth has been done. This is the only T-Rex I've ever seen that seems to be given more bird-like soft tissue on the face. And I think that that is really interesting. If you look carefully at the face, it does seem to have lips or at least some kind of oral tissue along the teeth of, of some kind more than you would see in the older uh, versions of this model. And it does have this more rounded um, corner of the mouth here. And some of the older T-Rexes, like the re-sculpted T-Rex from about 1995, you can see that the corner of the mouth is more of a sharp V-shape. And it's got that little muscle in there that you sometimes see on reconstructions of theropods. But compared to the newer version of the T-Rex, 
you can see that it's it's much more bird-like, especially it reminds me of a condor or a similar bird that has not quite a cheek, but a lot of soft tissue around the corner of the mouth that gives it that rounded appearance. In my opinion, I think that makes this one of the more accurate Tyrannosaurus toys on the market even today. And it does lack feathers, but obviously feathers are not necessarily something that we're certain of that existed on large Tyrannosaurus, at least not over most of the body. The skull shape retains the redone, more accurate shape of the 1995 model. And overall, it's got a really nice subdued color pattern with a few splashes of darker red in the shoulder. Those little red, almost like a lightning stripe, that indicates to me that this is actually the first or original edition of this remade T-Rex. There was uh, an update to this, which came out later, that lacked these red marks. And I think the other change, I'll have to go back and double check this actually, I think the other change is to how it stood. Let's see how well this is able to stand on its own. The tail does curve down to contact the ground, but yeah, you can see that the feet, let me move this here, the feet did come out a little bit warped to the point where even with the tail contacting the ground, it's going to lean to the side a little too much. And I know that that's something that Forrest Rogers, the sculptor of these, has talked about in interviews before. And they did come out with an updated version of this T-Rex. However, I believe that that updated one, or does this one have it too? Forrest Rogers has mentioned that she thinks the lower jaw on some of this these models came out too short, possibly due to breakage of the original resin mold that they would have used to tool the production molds and that somebody may have gone and glued that piece back on when they made the mold giving it a little bit of an overbite appearance and this does look like it's a little short compared to the upper jaw so that might be an issue with both versions of the 1999 edition of t-rex very very cool so let's dig in here and see what is next We've got the 2007 repaint, not remake. Should have brought some scissors over. But the repainted version of, oh, there it is. Look at that. Darn it. Darn it. Darn it. Darn it. Darn it. Darn it. Obviously, the repainted Spinosaurus. I was very curious to get this since I've been going into uh, detail talking about the way, uh, the subtle differences between these models, the way in which they are produced, the differences in plastic. One thing that always struck me about the original Carnegie Spinosaurus, which I have right here, is how rubbery it is. So with the original, you can see it is incredibly flexible. The arms are very rubbery, almost like the very earliest Carnegie models that came out in 1988. It's really rubbery. So the repaint feels right away, as I hold this, much less so, much less rubbery. There's really not a lot of give to any of these parts. It's cast from the same kind of harder plastic that you'll find and I guess most of the other repaints, this is actually only my second 2007 repaint right here. So I'm not sure if they were all cast in the same plastic. Maybe some of you will already know that. But that is a definite difference. The sculpt seems to be pretty much the same. Right off the bat, I'm seeing some differences here in the tooling. There's some smooth areas on either side of the belly here that are not present on the original. Some of the markings seem a little bit deeper. On the repainted one's legs, for example, you can see those deep wrinkly grooves compared to the more 
shallow grooves of the original. That seems to mirror the kind of pattern you would see in the retools and the refreshed sculpts that were coming out of the original 80s models in the early 90s. So obviously this has been slightly retooled. They probably refreshed this mold by going into the original mold and just deepening those wrinkles, bringing out some of that texture a little bit more. There does seem to be some additional texture that's been added along the side of the belly here, these little lumpy warty areas that are not present on the original. Obviously the belly stamp has been redone, it still faces the same way. Get my focus redone here, there we go. And interestingly though, the belly stamp is in the same weird format that those 1992 models originally came in, where it just says China instead of made in China. It doesn't say Miami, Florida on here. It's almost like they simply went in and retooled the belly stamp. I wonder if they actually remolded this from the original resin cast, if they still happen to have that on hand. It would be kind of interesting. I really do prefer the color scheme on this new one, which is one of the reasons I wanted to make it one of my first repaint purchases. I think this red and black and gray is a really, really cool and attractive paint scheme. The original one is nice, don't get me wrong, it's got a little bit more of that hand-painted look, but just this flat light brown, eh, that never really did it for me for some reason. And look at the eyes. They're just black and shiny, like a doll's eyes. Gives it that little shark look. That's kind of cool. Obviously, this is less accurate than the remake of the Spinosaurus, which came out shortly after this one, although this one did continue to be sold and available through Safari's catalogs up through the discontinuation of the line. So obviously there's something to be said, even though this is not quite accurate, it's still a really nice model. This original model dates from 1991 or 1992, and over a decade later, it was still going strong. So there's something to look at the the painted detail on the inside of that mouth is pretty cool. Ah, look at that. So that's the repainted Spinosaurus. Let's take a look at our last figure that we're going to unbox today. Move those guys out of the way. And let's see. Last, last Carnegie figure. There we go. You can't get the repainted Carnegie Spinosaurus without... His partner in crime, the repainted Iguanodon. And that is the 2007 version of the Carnegie Iguanodon. You can see this has the brown paint scheme with some dark brown stripes. And it actually has some nice sort of maroonish or reddish brown, maybe purplish brown highlights here along uh, the tail, I guess this is kind of a wash that they applied after it was done being painted. It has the eye, which is way more detailed, I think, than the original one's eye. With that golden brown eye and a big dark pupil in the middle and a black beak. Comparing this to the original, you can see that they kind of flip-flop the eye work compared to the Spinosaurus. The original has that doll eye look with just black and a little white highlight on there. And I have to admit that this original Iguanodon has always been one of my very, very favorite of the original Carnegie line. It's got everything that I love about the Carnegie Collection models. It's glossy. It's got that very painterly look. It's got a beautiful slightly contrasting wash of this navy blue over the whole light gray, which I think is something that was lost with the later 90s editions. It's just got a really nice color scheme. It looks beautiful in hand. It's very glossy. It's like a little piece of art. So that's part of why I never really bothered with the repainted versions. But I have to say 
that unlike the remakes, um, the, I guess slight remakes that came out in the late 90s, these 2007 remakes are not bad. They do capture some of that painterly appearance. They do have nice washes on them. They have much more subtle paint schemes than the very bright and colorful ones of the 90s. And, you know, there's a case to be made that these are probably equal to each other, maybe even... I'm not going to say that this new one is superior. I do still prefer the original. But the less glossy paint allows the detail to be brought out more. I think, once again, these are the same exact sculpt. I don't even see too much evidence of retooling. Some of these wrinkles look a little deeper than these, although you could write that off as the thicker, glossier paint that's on the old model. The belly stamp does seem to have been redone and actually flipped. I'm going to have to flip this one upside down to compare them. Let's get right in there. So once again, it has the same belly stamp as the original one does. It seems to have just been mirrored onto the other side of the figure. I wonder if that's something that has been just done for the 2007 edition, or if the intermediate ones, like the 1997 Iguanodon that was done in gray color vinyl, um, also has that flipped. Usually these 2007 versions are using the same molds, which are often redone molds from 1997, making them sort of a 10-year refresh. It's too bad that the line didn't make it to 2007. I would have liked to see what kind of refreshes came out that year. That's going to do it for today. So thank you for joining me on my latest unboxing adventure for Jurassic Plastic. And I hope to see you again soon.